Hey Mike, um, I figured it'd be quicker just to do a video and a little more um, easier to explain all the equipment and what I purchased. And so back in June when I was looking to um, change up my camera, I really got hooked on this depth of field. I started seeing it all over YouTube and a couple of different places. And I thought if I'm getting another camera, I'm going to want to be able to incorporate that look into what I'm shooting. Eventually I want to bring it into some of my listings. Unfortunately, the last few listings I've had, um, they're just not ones I want to drag a video camera around just because the houses aren't aren't good for video. But uh, we'll get there. I'll find something really good I can list um, in you know in the next couple of weeks, and and I'll get something up. Uh, also, the other thing with this camera, uh, I bought this in June off Craigslist for uh, five hundred and sixty dollars, and um, I'm seeing them on Craigslist quite a bit now in that five hundred dollar range. My son. Uh, takes film at high school and uh, wants a new camera in a couple of weeks for Christmas. So uh, talked about possibly getting a second one of these uh, just for him and uh, his endeavors. Um, and two, selfishly, it'd be nice to have two cameras because there's um, some other things I'm doing outside of real estate where I could have two cameras going. So um, on a mini DV situation, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, Ted, you're back in tape. Well, I've got five years of tape. Um, I've, I've had a really nice Sony digital uh, mini DV camera, standard def. Uh, when I uh, broke that one, when my underwater bag uh, sprung a leak and I lost that camera, I got a cheap Sony replacement because I got all this tape. I got offload. And um, sticking with having a lot of tape and having to get rid of tape over the next couple of years, onto a digital format to store it. I said, ah, I can get one more. The other big push to move this camera, like I explained earlier, was trying to get into the depth of field uh, type of shooting. And um, this ring size is the big part. It's this filter ring is a 43 millimeter filter ring size. And the Sony was like a little tiny peephole. It was like a 25. So, you know, to get this equipment like this JAG adapter, which I'll show you in a minute, I needed that adapter. Now, other key things on this camera is I wanted to do an external microphone. I didn't want to be stuck with this microphone up here. So this has a nice little port. It's got headphones, microphone. I can also plug in an AV cable um, from a VCR to get my old VHSC tapes uh, that I shot when my kids were really little um, in, into a digital format and then over to the computer. Um, so that's going to be uh, another benefit of this. It's got a built-in um, light, and we'll see if we can get this on. It's got a built-in light so when you're shooting video, um, there you go, you can light up darker areas. Now, it's not the best situation, but it tends to work really well. Another uh, feature on here, which you'll start to hear a lot, is 24p. Um, that's the frame rate that it can shoot at, 24p is the hot thing that everyone wants because it gives a more film quality look to what you're shooting, gets away from the video. Um, and if I didn't mention this, uh, the three megapixel camera, there's a button for it. I'm carrying this around and taking still shots and leaving my SLR in the car a lot of times because the, the quality coming out of this is fantastic. And um, there is a little storage uh, chip down here for the still pictures. They don't store on the tape. Uh, tapes are cheap. You know, I can buy a big pack of those for 25 bucks at Walgreens. And uh, so they don't totally bother me, and their storage isn't that, that terrible. So um, uh, that's uh, the big reasons why I like the camera. Oh, last thing I forgot to talk about, it's got an accessory shoe on the top. So I've got a wireless uh, lavalier mic, and I can put the receiver up here. If I want to get a shotgun microphone, I can put it up there. If I want to get an external light, I can put it up there. It's also got a manual focus down here um, for other things. So there's there's a lot of nice little features on the camera. Okay, so the big reason moving over was for the JAG-35. All this is is a, um, a way that I can obtain depth of field in my shots. That means keep the subject in very clear focus and get the background out of focus so when I'm trying to get the viewers attention on my subject I can narrow in different areas so um, how this works 
is this is the uh, the 43 uh, millimeter adapter ring that that screws in the front of the camera. You can see there's an opaque piece of glass in here. This is called the focusing screen, and what ends up happening is when you shoot um, a picture through the lens that's put on the front of here, so it projects the uh, image onto the focusing screen, the video camera focuses on the focusing screen. It doesn't focus all the way through, it's just on the focusing screen. So that's why it's opaque, so the picture shows up kind of like a, like a movie screen. And uh, you get one of these uh, 50 millimeter Canon FD lenses. It's the old, old school um, FD before the EOS. And um, this just goes right on the front. Let's see if I get this right. Sometimes I get it right. There we go. So that just goes on the front here. Um, this is a, a f1.4. That means I can really open up this iris and get a lot of light in. Um, you can find these on eBay for about 70, 80 bucks, but there's a 1.8 out there. Don't do it. Uh, get the 1.4. It's a it's a much better situation. So this goes on the front. You can see um, how that image comes through. Now notice how it's upside down. You need to understand that once you start getting into this, there's two things you have to do. Either learn how to shoot upside down like I'm doing, or you can send the camera into JAG, and JAG has a hack where they can add a switch to the camera to flip the image on the screen so um, you're shooting the, the image. Um, you're looking at the image right side up. In production, you still got to flip it, but in iMovie, it's really easy to flip a, a picture around, and uh, in Final Cut, it's very easy to do that too. So. Um, this is how I'm achieving that look on those those films you've seen. Um, I'm really enjoying it, trying to figure out how to incorporate it in. A uh, couple of things. If I didn't have so much tape stock, I would probably be looking at the HF100, the Canon Fixia HF100. Um, if I remember right, it does have the 43 millimeter um, uh, uh, filter size, so it'll fit this JAG. You just have to double check that. And now you're into flashcards and you're out of the tape. And so, you know, eventually um, that's where everything's going to go is to flashcards. Um, if you look up on uh, Vimeo and see what people are doing with video with the Canon 5D Mark II, that's the future of um, stuff like I'm doing. Uh, I don't know about professional film, but, you know, that's where it's going to be. You're going to show up at one place with one camera that does everything. It's t taking your st high quality stills and taking your video and you're able to put really high quality um, lenses on the front of those cameras to achieve much different looks. So I hope that kind of explains it. Sorry it was eight minutes. Uh, no matter how fast I try to talk through these things, it takes a while. And uh, anyone interested in how all this stuff works, just drop me an email and uh, be happy to talk about it more. And if there's tips you got that will help me uh, get better at that, I'd love it too. Have a great day. Thank you.